Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Metal Horror Gamer. And you know what I've always loved? Gears of War. Yeah, I remember the first time I saw and played the original Gears of War. I remember my brother rented it out from Blockbuster. Yeah, that's going way back. And I remember being blown away by the graphics. At the time, it was like nothing I've ever seen before. It looked amazing. I was like, this looks so real. <laughs> you look at it now, it's like... Maybe not so much, but back then it did. And I, I just, I was amazed by the mechanic of where you had to split up into different paths and hope that your partner would stay alive and hope that you stayed alive as well. It was so cool. It was so unique. I never s seen anything like that. So Gears of War, the mechanics, the graphics, the, the characters, everything really caught my attention. And even the enemies, the enemies were amazing. They were vicious. They were cool. The weapons... Like the Lancer, that shit was just brutal. He just chainsaw people left and right. It was amazing. Myself and a group of friends would play the original game online every day, all day. It was just so much fun. We could never get off the damn thing. We were constantly on, on there. Every time we came online on Xbox, we would get that message. Someone has invited you to join Gears of War. You know, it was like... All right, let's do it again. You know, we did it every single freaking day. It was just so much fun. And then eventually we started doing the, the sniper battles. And that was fun. But I usually favored the torque bow. You know, I was so good with it. I would usually fuck up all snipers or anyone else that would end up getting in my way. I was I was like a damn sharpshooter with that damn thing. <sighs> I really missed those days. It was really fun. But anyways... I have played every major Gears of War title to date, so when I heard about the Rise of Rom comic, I was like, wow, but I wasn't sure if I should get it. I saw the first issue at my local comic shop when it was released, and I wanted it, but I gave it a pass. I was like, eh, maybe I won't get it, because I didn't know how it would be. But recently, I have regretted it, so a couple of days ago, I ordered the first three issues, and this week, issue four came out. So I picked it up quickly because my local comic shop didn't have too many copies. So I made sure to grab it as quickly as I could. Now, I haven't read the past three issues, but I will soon in the coming weeks. But I will go ahead and read issue four regardless. I doubt I will be too lost. So disclaimer, if I get any facts wrong, well, it's because I haven't read issue one through three yet. So yeah. Okay, so are we good? Great. Let's take a look at Gears of War, The Rise of Rom number four and as usual we are going to start with the art by max dubar but to make it clear here this is how i place the art as of now dc is at the highest point right now when it comes to art marvel is not at the bottom but they are somewhere in the middle leaning towards the bottom but at the bottom is just a lot of indie books that would have like a lot of shitty art like michelle perez's the pervert I would say Rise of Rom is slightly above most of Marvel's current art. I'm not saying all, all of Marvel's art sucks, but a lot of it does. Hopefully we will start to see it get better sooner rather than later. But back on subject, the art in this book looks really nice. The gears and the locusts look spot on. In the book there is a splash page of a corpser and it just looks amazing. The story is by Curtis. Weeb or Weeb? I, I don't know how to pronounce the name. I'm sorry if I horribly mispronounced that name. I, I'm not good with last names. I'm just not. Anyways, the story is hard to judge just because I can't see the whole picture because I haven't read issue one through three yet. But I can say there was no point where I was bored or not enjoying it. So I'm leaning more towards it was good. Basically, the book starts off with us seeing a Carmine. Well, a William Carmine to be exact. And he is retiring. He has spent his whole life as a soldier. And he feels the time has finally come to hang up the boots. If you are familiar with the lore of Gears of War. Then you know that basically the planet of Sarah has been at war for a long, long time. Even before E-Day. They've constantly been at war. So, we see Carmine turning in all his gear to Lieutenant Forge. And he is just wondering why Carmine just doesn't stay in the military. Maybe help train the young soldiers. But Carmine lets him know that he's fought under the command of his father, who reported to his grandfather. Carmine jokingly says he was beginning to think he was going to have to send his kids off to war. 
if he only knew. But quickly, an emergency hole opens up and a corpse crawls out and kills a soldier instantly. Seeing that they are surprised and having no idea what it is, I'm guessing this is the start of E-Day. After the corpse emerges, a bunch of locusts and General Rom also appear. They quickly take care of everyone in the room, including William Carmine. Poor Carmines. They always die. Except Clayton. Scourge shows up as well, but he keeps warning Rom that if he keeps going down this path, his time will come sooner rather than later. Which I don't quite get that because I'm sure Scourge wants to kill everyone as well, so... Alright, um, the next few pages are basically just showing all the carnage the locusts are causing, slaughtering every gear in sight. The artwork here is really awesome. There are some funny parts here as well. Like we see a gear seeing the corpser and he says mother of and he gets squashed. Later, while Rom is killing a gear, a bullet just grazes his cheek and we see a gear behind him and he just says like fuck and Rom throws his knife right into his face, killing him. It's all funny but since they all look like the typical gear, they just remind me of Carmine and all I hear is Carmine's voice. So it's funny but it also makes me sad because I love the Carmines. But while Rom and the other locusts are killing the gears, another locust named Sroc, Sroc, I don't know how to pronounce it, betrays Rom and tries to kill him. Scourge warns them before the death blow hits. Maybe if I read the previous issues, I would know who this locust is and why he is betraying Rom, but I haven't, so yeah. But it's clear he wants Rom's position. Scourge tries to help, but Sroc quickly fucks up Scourge, and Rom and Sroc begin to fight. They go back and forth for a while fighting until some Theron guards shoot some torque bows into Sroc and he just blows up. Torque bows for the win! Like, that's my, that's my fucking weapon of choice right there. I love the torque bow. But, moving on. The book ends with Rom and Scourge talking about how they are going to kill all the groundwalkers. And we end with a beautiful double page shot of the locusts going through a town. We can see grunts, boomers, and even a berserker. The last page is an awesome splash page of Rom and Scourge. So okay, seriously, being a gearhead here, I love this book. I'm really excited for issue 1 through 3 to get delivered to me already. I can't wait to read those books and be able to fill in the holes of the story I missed so far. Great artwork, I love the characters from the game. The story was interesting and yeah, I'm excited for issue 5. Great book from IDW. I don't care for many of your books, but this one and Sonic have been great so far. I recommend any Gears of War fan to pick up this series. It's awesome. Alright, that's it for this comic showcase. This was number 9. Gears of War, The Rise of Rom, issue 4 is fantastic. So, that's it everyone. And you know the drill. Leave a like, subscribe, share, follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you all on the next video. Laters!